Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint this gorgeous impasto tree scene. Make sure you follow me on Facebook so that you can share your paintings with me and get sneak peeks into other things that are coming up, different paintings and events and such. There's a link in the description below as well as a full list of materials. Let's get started. We're going to start with a gray background. Now you don't want to make this too dark otherwise your trees won't stand out. So as you're laying the background just focus on applying a little bit more white than black paint. I'm going to use my one inch flat brush and just wet it in the jar, wipe a little off on the edge. As you go make sure to get a little extra water if you find that you're having a harder time getting the paint to spread. So I'm going to load up with white paint on both sides of my brush quite a bit. I want to cover this pretty quickly and I'm just going to grab a little corner of black my brush strokes are just going to be kind of random, just back and forth, however you need to to get it covered. Don't worry about blending those colors in, just get them on there. Every time I go back for more paint, I'm going to pick up a different mixture. Maybe this time I'll only pick up white. There's still a little hint of black in my brush, so I'll still get a bit of a gray color. Remember to put full pressure on your brush to lay down as much paint as possible. And when you want to try and blend colors together a little bit, just use light pressure there. That will help feather it together. Hard pressure to lay paint down, light pressure to blend it in. If you get a spot that you think is too dark, like I'm, I intentionally picked up more black there than I actually want. So if you feel like that spot is too dark, then just grab more white and you can work it into there and kick that black back a little bit. Also, you can just wait until it dries and you can cover it with some fresh paint. Okay, so there's our background. Very simple, very quick. I think it only took me just a couple of minutes, probably five minutes or less to cover this background. So I'm gonna let this dry completely and then once it's dry, we'll come back and start painting our trees. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a base for our trees. So decide where you want your trees to be. I want my trees to be right about on this top one third line. And that doesn't mean that all of my trees are gonna be exactly the same height. You can make some taller, some shorter, whatever. I think it's a little more interesting rather than just slapping them straight in the center to put them up in the top one third area somewhere. You can make them really tall if you want, almost to the top, or you can bring them down a bit. But I wouldn't really bring the overall weight of the trees too much below this one third mark. To start our trees off, I'm gonna use this about a three quarter of an inch filbert brush. The type of brush that you use doesn't really matter. I would say so long as it's got a nice round shape and it's a little bit larger, that should be good. So you wouldn't want to use like our one inch flat brush because the hard edges is going to make it difficult for you to get a nice smooth tree shape. So that's why I'm using this one. If you have one of those natural hair bristle brushes that I use a lot of, you can absolutely use it for this as well. So I wet my brush in the jar and wiped a little off on the edge and I'm gonna load up with some black paint. So what we're doing here, like I said, is just creating the base for the trees, the, the base for the foliage. So you don't have to worry about details here. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of start over here about where I want my trees to begin. I'm gonna take it off the edge and I'm just kind of scrubbing out the basic shape where I want my trees to live. I'm bring parts of it down a bit. And notice it's just one big continual scrub. I'm not worried if it's not filled in all the way because I'm going to paint over all of this. Bring parts down lower, take parts up higher. I'm gonna put a nice big one right here because I think that's about where I want my focal tree to be. I 
and off the edge on the other side. And once you've got that done, you can decide, you know, do you want a shorter tree somewhere? Maybe I want kind of a short tree right in here. Maybe I want to bring this up a little bit higher here. Just make any adjustments that you want. Your lines don't have to be real crisp. Notice the edges here are a little bit puffed out. That's okay. All right, now we've got the, the base color for our trees down. Let's go ahead and work on some trunks. So I'm gonna to move to my half inch angle brush and I'm still gonna use black paint. Let's load up with that. So take, take a little bit of a hint from the shape that we have here. You know, if I have this part that comes down low, then I'm probably gonna interpret that as a tree. Same with maybe this is a tree and this is a tree. So wherever I have these shapes, that's kind of where I'm gonna put the trunks for my trees. So I've got my brush with my black paint on it. And it doesn't matter if you start at the top or the bottom. I am typically more comfortable starting at the bottom, but if you're more comfortable starting from the top, that's okay. Just remember that your tip of your angle brush is always gonna drag. So since I'm gonna start at the bottom, I'm gonna flip it around like that, so that tip is gonna drag as I come up. So I'm just gonna decide I'm gonna start with this guy. And it doesn't matter what your trunks are shaped like. They can be really curly, they can be you know, really whimsical, they can be jagged, they can be very straight, whatever you like. So I'm gonna start down here at the bottom and just kind of come up. Now I'm not gonna just go straight into that tree because then it's gonna look like a puff stuck on a stick. So I'm gonna go up about like that and then branch it off and up into that black. And then I can work on filling out the shape of the tree, making the base wider, smoothing out any lines. And I can add more branches. I'm not gonna get too crazy with these branches. I'm gonna have them be fairly simple trees. Here's the other thing I don't want you to do with these trees. Don't start in one space and then move over here, and then move over here, and then move over here, because you're gonna have very regularly spaced trees. So pick one, do it, and then pick another one. So I'm gonna do this one over here, and I feel like this is my short trees, kind of small. This one is gonna be a little bit bigger, so I think I'm gonna make my trunk a little bit bigger too. do that by putting extra pressure on my brush as I move down the trunk. Remember the more pressure you put the wider your line is going to be. So if you want very thin lines make sure your hand is on your canvas so that you can really control that pressure. And then I'll move over to here. And you're not gonna see any of this if you paint up into the base of your trees, so just go right into it. And I feel like that branch got a little wide for me. So if that happens to you, that's okay. You can either clean off your brush and scrub part of it out or you can just keep that width and bring it down into the rest of the tree. See how when I made the rest of the tree a little bit wider, now that branch that comes off of it doesn't look too wide. 
I've got a little extra water on my brush. If you notice, right down here, you can see the background through the tree, just because my brush was a little bit too dry. And that extra water helped me cover it. Make all of your branches a little different. So I'm going to have this one branch off a little farther down than some of the other trees. Just give each of them a, a different personality. This is going to be my main tree right here. So I'm going to give it a nice wide trunk and I think I'm going to give it a little bit more personality than some of these other ones too. So give it a little bit more of a bend. So I feel like a couple of my trees didn't get spaced out enough as much as I would like. So what I'm gonna do now is look at the top portion of the trees and see if there's any other areas where I could say that there's a tree growing there. And I kind of feel like right here could be a tree all on its own. So I can bring a trunk from here that comes up to support this part. let the branches from different trees cross in front of each other. That's perfectly okay because that would happen in real life. Okay now I feel like that that tree so close to this one helped break up the little bit of a pattern that I was feeling like I had. I may actually put another one right here too that's kind of going off of the side. You can add as many trees as you like. Now we're going to start adding our highlights and front foliage to these trees. So just like when we were doing the trunks, how I told you to kind of stagger at work, you know, start from one place, go to another, and back and forth rather than like this, that's even more important here. And the reason that's important is because if I start with this tree, move to this one, this one, you know, all the way across in a line, then this one is going to be all the way in the back and each tree is going to be progressively closer to me until we get to this tree, which is going to be on top of everything. I, I kind of want to make these trees look like they're staggered in the space that they're occupying. So I think that this tree is in the back. So I'm going to start with that tree first. And the reason I'm starting with that one first is because as I add the tree next to it, it's going to overlap it and push this tree into the back. So decide which tree you want in the foreground and actually do that one last. So this one, which is our main tree, I'm actually going to paint this one very last. I'm not going to do anything to it right now because painting it last is going to make it overlap these other trees and keep it in the foreground. So like I said, I'm going to start with this one here because I feel like it's in the back. So I've got my filbert brush, the same brush that you used for the background here. And I'm going to load up with some white on one side and some black on the other side. So like that. Now, it doesn't matter where your light source is coming from, but just determine where you want it to be. So if I highlight this tree on this side and put the shadow on this side, then I would wanna do that to all of the trees. So you can put the highlight on the top and the shadow on the bottom or wherever you want it, so long as it's consistent. So I'm actually gonna get a little bit more black. I'm gonna put the shadow on first, and I'm gonna have it be on this side of the tree. So 
I'm putting the black part of the paint on the canvas and I'm just gonna kind of, just kind of roll it. Just kind of squiggle it around a bit. However you need to do it to get the shape that you want. And see there's a tiny bit of white coming off into there. Now I'm gonna turn my brush over to the white side and I'm gonna do the highlight on this side. Back to the black and just kind of break up that line between the two of them. And I can go back and add some bright white if I want to. You can go outside of the background that you added on here. You don't have to keep it confined to that. And my paint is very heavy on here. I'm really using thick paint. You could even do this with a palette knife. I'd considered doing it with a palette knife for you today, but I decided to just go with the brush. So there's our first tree, and I know he looks kind of strange because he's off on his own here, but once we get all of the other trees on here, it will look cohesive. So I'm going to move on to this tree, and I'm going to do that so that I can push this one in the background immediately. So most of what I just did here is going to be covered. So I'm going to get some black on the one side and some white on the other side. And again, I'm going to start with my black and do my low light first. And see how I'm just taking it right over top of that tree. And point your brush down. And do my highlight. black on this side. You can always come back after too if you feel like they're blending too much together. Let it dry a little bit, come back to it later. I feel like I probably should have done this one first because I want it to be behind, but that's all right. I'm just going to go with my highlight right there. Kind of cut my low light around it. So if you don't plan real well, don't worry about it because in a few minutes, once this has dried a bit, I can come back with the bright white on this tree and pull it over that line. I'm gonna move to this tree now. Start with my low light. You see how it's just kind of a smear and a little bit of a, like a half circle. actually ended up with another tree that didn't have a trunk, so I can just go ahead and add that trunk. But I'm gonna do this little tree first. This little one I feel like is way close, and I feel like he'd probably be pretty bright, so I'm gonna just let him be bright. Whatever black is on my brush is gonna be good enough, I feel like. And I'm gonna work on this tree before I do this tree. Because if I do this tree first, once I overlap it with this one, it's gonna disappear. So I'm gonna have this one overlap this one. But like I said, if you make a decision and then you end up not liking your placement, just let it dry and repaint it in. insinuate this other tree over here with some highlight. I might need to wait until that dries to come back and add my bright white to it. Now while I wait for these trees to dry a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add the trunk for this tree that I added. 
and I'm going to show you something else really cool that's going to give your trees a little bit more life and personality. So I'm back to my half inch angle brush and I'm just going to make my trunk here. I'm going to stop at that tree because this one is behind it. I am just going to bring that down so I know where my branch is going. I'll add the dark back over top of it later. So what we're going to do now is make it so these branches don't look like they're behind the trees. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of extra black and I'm going to extend some of these up over the foliage that we just painted. So for example, right here, see how I have this bright white line right there? I'm going to take my branch right up to that line so it looks like it's in front of this darker patch behind and it's going up and holding up that piece of the tree. You can just kind of determine where those are as you want to. I'm not going to do any to this right now because I'm going to add some more white once that's dry. Alright, so I got my blow dryer out and I dried most of this. Some of the really heavy areas are still kind of wet, but the dryer made them about dry to the touch. So I'm just going to amp up some of these highlights. I'm using kind of a mixture of the black and the white. If you get too much highlight, just grab a little bit of black and kick that back a bit. I'm not going to worry about this one because this tree is totally going to cover that. So I'm going to add a little bit more to this one here. Don't streak over the same spot too many times because you'll start blending it and then you'll just end up with a solid gray color. Let some of those colors be separate. I'm going to add just a little bit more dark down here. And then this one really, I needed to bring it back over that spot where I decided to put this tree behind it. So I'm just going to take this bright white right over that spot. I'm just going to finish up the branches, bringing a couple of them over top of some other parts, and then we will move on to our main tree. All right, now we're gonna do our main tree. So I'm gonna get a bit of black, and then I'm gonna grab some of this cadmium red deep hue. And I got them on the same side. Can you see how much paint I have on there? It's quite a bit. I've actually got a blob. And I'm gonna start with my low light area, just like on the other trees. Same type of brush stroke. Just kind of these big swoops. You can add more black as you need. And I'm okay that it broke open there and is showing the tree behind it because it could be that there's just a break in the leaves there. I don't want too much red on this side, but I don't want it solid black either. 
Now I'm gonna grab quite a bit of red, lots and lots and lots of red, and I'm gonna do my highlight side. Again, just taking it right over the tree next to it. Maybe a tiny bit of black to just blend in those two sides. I'm using very light pressure there, just kind of touching the paint. I'm not putting pressure on the brush and like squishing it down to the canvas. I'm just kind of smoothing the paint. I'm going to bring more of that red into the center here. I really want this tree to pop. Now I've got some Napfall Crimson, and this is gonna be one of my highlight colors. I'm gonna put two different colors on this tree to really highlight it. So I'm gonna grab quite a bit of it again and start working on some of those highlights. Because the red is still wet, it's gonna drag a bit of that into this highlight color, and that's okay. If you feel like it's just covering the red underneath, you can always pick up a little bit more of the first red and work that in with the naphthol. I feel like my tree is getting really big and awesome over here, but it's kind of wimpy and small over there. So I just grab some more of my cad red and black, and I'll bring this out a bit. You don't have to make them perfectly round. You can have little parts of it that kind of come off farther than the rest. Again, notice how much paint I'm using. I'm using so much paint. We're really gonna get an impasto effect on this front tree. More of my naphthol. Now I have some cadmium yellow DPO. Any yellow will really work. That's just the one that I prefer. So I'm gonna get some more naphthol, and I'm gonna pick up some of this cad yellow with it. And I'm gonna concentrate this just on a few areas, so mostly like here at the edge. And maybe right in here, I feel like this part is kind of forced forward a little bit more. And I feel like I am just gonna bring that over on this side. I'm not really liking that dark side on this one. I'm keeping it a little darker, but just not black like I had it. Now I'm gonna amp up this trunk again by adding a few highlights on it, just on my main one. You can do it on all of them if you want, but I'm just gonna do it on my main one. So I have a little drop of black and a little drop of white, and I'm back to my angle brush. So I'm gonna pick up some black, I'm gonna load my brush up with black, and then I'm gonna grab some white. And I'm gonna keep my highlights on the same side as my highlights on all of my trees. So I'm 
I'm just going to kind of swoop this down the edge here. And then I can pick up a little more black and kind of streak over top of it to smooth it out. I'm going to keep it nice and dark along this back edge. I kind of like to do little dashes when I highlight bark. It gives it more of a, a bark feel. So can you see I'm just kind of doing little streaks. They're about an inch, about an inch long or so. Keep my brush fairly clean, get some fresh black and just make sure it's dark on the back. You can do this until you're completely satisfied. If you hate the way your highlights are looking, let it dry, paint it over with some black, and start over. I'm just gonna really amp up the highlight here on this part. Getting a good amount of solid white. Off, get some black and smooth out those lines. And there's your fun impasto tree scene. I hope you guys enjoyed getting really free with the amount of paint that you use and really getting tons and tons of paint and texture on there. I hope this painting reminds you to never be afraid to stand out in the crowd. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and pass it on to your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe so that you can paint with me every single week. I do a paint video on Tuesday, a vlog on Thursday, and a live Q&A session on Sunday. Feel free to share your finished painting on my Facebook page. There's a link in the description below. And I will see you next time.